Welcome again to the work of the Guatemalan Foundation. This will be video number eight uh, and it's a project report. Uh, it's sort of an audio visual version of our newsletter number seven from September of 2011. Uh, in that we, we quote uh, President Ernest L. Wilkinson from his BYU commencement address in 1971 when he talked about how we can all help to solve the serious problems in the world. He said, I want to convince you that you and I, by living the gospel, can actually help to remedy these ills in a significant way. I have decided that the best way to do this is to give you examples of young men and women who have gone into the world and, by living Christian lives and being of service to others, have made an impact for good upon society. He then gave nine examples, the Anderson family and Guatemalan Foundation Partnership being the fifth. And we, we add uh, the uh, Guatemalan Foundation Partnership uh, is significant as uh, what we Andersons did uh, developed into, into that work. Uh, but he said, Cordell Anderson, a BYU graduate, was so haunted by the abject poverty, disease, and ignorance among the Indians of Guatemala where he served a mission that he and his family returned to devote their lives to work for the good of the, those people. He and his wife have initiated many large-scale agricultural projects, established a school, taken many who were dying of disease and malnutrition into their home, brought medicine literally to thousands in this area where there are no doctors, initiated sanitation, housing and community development projects, and introduced cultural and recreational programs by their individual extraordinary sacrifice and initiative, the Andersons are teaching and showing an entire people how to help themselves. Uh, so that, those are the words of uh, President Wilkinson. Of course, uh, one could say, well, Wilkinson was talking about what was happening in 1971, but what has the Foundation been doing lately? Please listen on and, uh, and you'll get, you get uh, the answer to that question, I believe. Uh, and to understand better uh, what he's talking about, uh, you really should go to uh, the two uh, history videos, um, YouTube videos, uh, and then uh, and you'll see that most of our work is centered on this uh, foundation school in Patricia, uh, where recently uh, my sister Jolene and who, her two daughters, Danielle and Kelly, and also my grandson Bronson, visited, and they produced uh, uh, reports of their visit, and so there are two YouTube videos also that would be extremely good for you to see, but we're talking here about a school in Patricia that uh, where we have literally produced champions over over many years now, and also the Ariel and Ines Anderson Chaluk School in a village nearby. Uh, these are very important projects, um, and we actually need some some help there. We're, we're a couple of thousand dollars short of meeting our obligations for the year, and so we really need some additional help there. Uh, from there, we uh, go over to the uh, Alto Vera Pass, uh, Coban area, uh, where uh, my family visited with Federico Pelis, a representative in the area. Um, and uh, so you see here uh, Jolene and uh, Kelly and uh, and Danielle and also Bronson in the other picture of there in Alta Vera Paz. But in our last report, we talked, we reported a family that uh, we've been helping. Uh, they're working very hard to support themselves, but we and we are helping the four middle children to all keep in school. Um, then we we uh, reported uh, a sewage disposal plant that is being constructed, and that we're helping and cooperating in this. Uh, the uh, heavy rains that uh, are, are upon Guatemala right now are, are kind of slowing down the project some, but uh, a lot of work has been going forward. Uh, the the families from the area all uh, are contributing 30 days labor. Um, uh, and, and, and so trenches have been dug all over and there's manholes so, uh, so there's a lot of work going on there in that project and and we continue of course to help them all we can um, then in the Akamal village uh, lightning struck a little two-year-old child Maria de Carmen and we uh, provided a satin 
covered uh, pine coffin for her burial. Uh, very poor family, and also they did the same thing for an 87-year-old uh, Andres who uh, died of natural causes in another village, and and he, uh, the family needed some help, so we provided the coffin there too. And then an ongoing project is that of Eduardo Reyes, whose home burned down, uh, and he was just devastated. They uh, they lost almost everything. Um, as you see in these pictures here, uh, uh, it was him, his uh, wife, uh, five children, his parents, and his wife's children, parents, all, all living in the same home, and and so they they were just devastated. Of course, there's no fire insurance, there's no government program to help people like this, and so uh, we uh, immediately uh, provided uh, help. Uh, in the way of tin roofing material, uh, they were able to scrounge a lot of uh, wood and whatnot that, that was not burned or not completely burned, and so they are putting up a, a temporary structure right now, and we need to help them do a little bit better in in providing a home for all of this large family. Uh, and then we come to the case of little Norma, who we have tried to help now for a couple of years. Uh, we've financed several trips to the city to to get a tumor on her backside removed. Uh, each time in the city, uh, she had some kind of, of a of a, uh, sickness, uh, a urinary sickness one time, another time it was the flu and so she wasn't operated on uh, and her mother was supposed to follow instructions uh, to, to get her healthy and, and ready to be operated on again but the mother, uh, which often happens in Guatemala, not uh, being very educated uh, uh, has, and not having the means, uh, has not been able to follow those instructions very well and so Norma has got worse uh, and so we decided that we would uh, take her into a health clinic uh, and so here you see her uh, being brought into Federico's home and then from there she was taken to the health clinic where she is uh, she's there uh, 24 hours a day now being taken care of and being treated in preparation to go to the city to uh, finally get operated on and experience health and happiness so we really need some help to to help Norma and all of these other people um, Let's just conclude by uh, going back to uh, President Wilkinson's speech in 1971. Uh, he concluded uh, quoting words from Andrew Carnegie, uh, who directed his words to wealthy people, and in our case, all of us are wealthy compared to these people that we're helping in Guatemala. So even the poorest of us are, are really fit in the category um, within the uh, the bounds, I, I guess we could say, of, of his advice and counsel uh, to how we can how we can help. He said this. This was Andrew Carnegie. He said, "This then is held to be the duty of the men of wealth: first, to set an example of modesty, unostentatious living, shunning display or extravagance, to provide moderately for the legitimate wants of those dependent upon him, and after doing so." to consider all surplus revenues which come to him simply as trust funds, which he is called upon to administer in the manner which, in his judgment, is best calculated to produce the most beneficial results for his poor brethren. And so we hope and pray that uh, we can take these words seriously and, and all do, uh, do, our, do, do the best we can in, in helping uh, these uh, poor people that uh, are so dependent on us. These are people that uh, we have chosen to help uh, because they're out of reach of government, uh, churches, um, other charitable institutions. Uh, they, they, they need us, and so please, please help all you can.